the enemy and know yourself. You need not fear the result of a hundred battles. We are now almost three hours into day two. Angola is now almost completely done for. He has stacked all of his units together in one of his last provinces. He has uh, three provinces left and now Southwest Africa. He is in war with Belgian Congo. Not only that, but Belgian Congo actually is in war with Equatorial Gabon here. Knowingly that Equatorial Gabon was occupied attacking Cameroon over here. So uh, this is like one big clusterfuck. We've got Equatorial Gabon occupied attacking Cameroon so Congo is attacking him in the back and while Belgian Congo is occupied with Equatorial Gabon we have got Southwest Africa who is attacking him in the back this is like a triple flank attack oh boy I don't know how it's going to go but um, it looks like Equatorial Gabon is managing to defend himself quite good and he's going into the counter offensive not sure what this uh, anti-air is supposed to do but okay so we've got uh, two light tanks from Equatorial Gabon and one armored car from Congo they're locked in combat Liberville is being attacked by cruisers same goes for Rwango over here doesn't look like Congo made any navy so that's crude that's uh, two cities taking out yeah I don't know who's going to win here uh, there is a couple of armored actually Congo, he has a lot of armored cars, he went uh, artillery armored cars, he has a lot of them armored cars, they are fast, so it's going to be interesting to see who will win over here. Then we've got uh, Upper Volta, Mauritania, who are still at war, so far no progress has been made, but Mauritania took back the provinces that he lost, and it looks like Upper Volta is uh, on the retreat. Oh, what? That's a large stack, man. Why are three light tanks, 15 infantry, two armored cars and three anti-air together in one stack? What the heck, man? More light tanks. Here is another one going for the light tank strategy. No artillery, just pure shock troops. I guess he's a uh, Axis Doctrine. Yeah, Axis. Let's see, also Upper Volta. My allies, oh, yeah, he's so slower and less damage output. Ooh, maybe not smart allies in early game to aggress an Axis player immediately. It looks like his troops aren't very organized. A lot of single units. He actually only has uh, two stacks, 200 car six infantry. And over here, why in God's name does he have militia in here? Militia are an extremely slow unit. They are the slowest unit in the game after railroad guns. They are defensive. By all means, they shouldn't be in a stack. This is a stationary unit used to protect your home provinces, mainly forests and cities. And he's making a lot of militia. I'm gonna click, double click his militia to see how many he has. He has nine militias. Nine. I know they're cheap. They're training fast. Upper Volta must be desperate. Dang. Okay, that's pretty much it for uh, Africa. Ben Shualand is just having leisure time with the AI. In the Middle East, we have Syria who is attacking AI. We've got uh, France, which is AI that is going to get ganged up by both Italy and the UK. The UK is doing something uh, very, very stupid. He has only three units and he's going to use it to attack Ireland. What? I mean, Ireland has four units in Dublin. I mean, he should know this as an experienced player. Not only that, but he is keeping his entire core provinces empty. What is that all about, man? See what army he has. Three light tanks, 10 militia, another militia player. What is going on? Seven armored cars, three anti-air and 15 infantry. So actually we went for only militia and light tanks and armored cars. Wow. Okay, maybe any one of the experienced players can explain to me why they are attacking with militia. I'd like to know. And surprisingly, we've got Poland, Ukraine and Argolans who are not at war with each other. The three of them contend themselves with attacking 
AI, I have messaged them because if they have a non-aggressive tag, they need to declare it. Also, so far here in Asia, there is no wars between uh, players. Also here, if my click and uh, Burma has a non-aggressive tag, they need to declare it. We've got uh, Indochina who is attacking Burma, however, and it looks like Burma will be taken unaware completely. His entire army is out of his course. The cities are unprotected. This is a very no move. Never ever leave your cities unprotected. You should at least have one infantry in there. What is he doing? That's bold. Seven artillery units with, without any protection from infantry. He has two battleships and they're not stacked. Burma is doing weird stuff. Then you got a uh, Sumatra who is completely trashing Borneo. Sumatra has made a large fleet. I'm gonna select them all. He has uh, five battleships, four destroyers. He has um, three interceptors. He has three naval bombers. No, he has more interceptors. He has seven interceptors, three naval bombers. How is that possible? Five battleships, four destroyers, seven interceptors, three naval bombers. We are only three hours into the Borneo has asked a gold check. I think it might have merit. I've never played Sumatra before, so I don't know if it is possible to have this kind amount of units without uh, using gold. It could be possible. Heck, I don't know. So uh, one of the game admins will look into this. Borneo has had a huge losses. He uh, has a little troops left. He has only 14 units compared to Sumatra, who has 39 units, so that's pretty much screwed up for Borneo. Khabarovsk and West Yakutia will probably end up in war sooner than later. And then let's go to Australia. The two Australian players so far, they contend themselves with attacking AI, but I think this will not last, but we will know soon enough. Let's go now to South America. We've got uh, East Brazil and Sao Paulo who have non-aggression pact. We've got North Brazil here who has um, a non-aggression pact with Colombia. So this is no good news for uh, East Amazonas. We've got Colombia who is moving to attack East Amazonas. East Amazonas completely unaware at this point. This aim is gonna be pretty for East Amazonas. Let's go now to North America. We've got South Mexico who's attacking uh, North Mexico and Central America. Here we've got uh, Illinois and Kentucky who have a non-aggression pact. They are both attacking Kansas over here, but Texas is attacking Kentucky here in the bag. This is pretty messed up for Kentucky. That's a fact. I don't know if um, if Kansas and Texas here have a non-aggression pact. If they do, they should declare it. Looks like uh, Kansas, he has gone for uh, light tanks and artillery. See quite some armored cars too. Yeah, this ain't looking good for Kansas, but Texas is coming to the rescue, so anything could happen. So far, no cities have been lost, so no permanent damage has been done. We've got Saskatchewan and Alberta who might end up into war sooner than later as well, I guess. The two players here are biding their time, contenting themselves with attacking AI for the moment. And that's it for now. We will soon discover what will happen on this map. This map will be a little bit slower than the home front map as there's more space and so less initial conflict but this is going to go to hell sooner than later anyway